This is the weekly review for the week of April 17th to April 21st, as well as this week's Sunday preparation. So coming into the week, I said that I wanted to wait until the new week opening gap formed and Monday's price action took place to see what the bias would be because we've just been in consolidation pretty much for the past couple weeks. So there wasn't really anything clear on the daily chart or the hourly chart, even though I favored these equal highs to be taken out as well as February's high and trading up into the volume and balance up here. So I was just waiting on Monday's price action and initially I jumped the gun a little bit in Monday's setup here at the 9.30 to 10.10 window. Um, we didn't really have a clear raid here and there was no SMT, but I kind of jumped on the long right here at this M5 Fair Valley Gap, targeting um, these relative equal highs that were just below the new week opening gap because my bias was that Monday was going to be consolidation. Um, but this setup here was not the cleanest. And I ended up closing the trade when we closed below this M5 Fair Valley Gap here on the on an M5 candle. So I took like, I think a little bit less than a half hour loss. And then I just waited to see what price would do. And we just started chopping around. So I identified that the rest of this day was probably going to be seek and destroy price action. And that's exactly what ended up playing out um, <clears throat> when I was just monitoring the price action later in the day here. I was noting this breaker after we took sell side with an SMT and we had some pretty clean equal highs up here. Um, I didn't take anything. I was just monitoring this and of course nothing happened and the trade ended up failing because this is seek and destroy price action and we want to stay out of this. So pretty much the entire AM session was not doable for trading. Uh, and then in the PM session, we did get a setup, but there was no RTO. So this ended up being a market maker buy model. And the bias of price wanting to trade up into the new week opening gap still played out, but just not in the AM session. This was too early here. Um, and then in the PM session, we got that raid of an AM low with SMT and then clear displacement up here, uh, leaving behind the breaker and fair valley gap on a M5 time frame. But there was no RTO and price just kept going up until it reached the new week opening gap. So the logic was there, but there was no trade to um, or no entry was um, was given here. So moving on to Tuesday's price action. Tuesday, I didn't note anything. Um, it was just a very sloppy day. There was no setup, so I pretty much just stayed out. There was nothing for me to mark up. Um, so moving on to Wednesday. Wednesday still was operating with the same bias that we're going to use the new week opening gap as a draw on liquidity. And <clears throat> we had what looked like another potential market maker buy model forming here where we just went down all of London. And then in New York, we had the reversal with a raid and SMT breaking market structure to the upside. And then just prior to 930, we got that RTO into the Fair Valley Gap and breaker. 
and price ended up trading up, delivering to the new week opening gap, uh, which was nice to see. But the entry happened before 9.30, and it's between 9.30 and 11 that I'm usually looking for an entry. And as you can see, the price action here was not super clean. This was a high resistance liquidity run, but it's still delivered to the target nonetheless. But the logic here was sound in that we traded up into the new week opening gap on a week that we're anticipating consolidation. And then in the PM session, I annotated a trade of price wanting to return back down into the new week opening gap. So we took sell side, uh, excuse me, buy side here broke down and the last hour of trading is going to trade to the liquidity that has yet to be taken and we had these relative equal lows and two potential entries here to go down to take those relative equal lows with the new week opening gap being the drawn liquidity because now we're above it and we started to break down and respect bearish PD arrays so it's likely that price is wanting to draw back down to that new week opening gap. Because if price is in consolidation, it's unlikely to go higher. So moving on to Thursday. Thursday I felt had the cleanest price action. And I was pretty much spot on on my executions on Friday. I mean on Thursday. So... Similarly, we had a big move down in London. Here is premium and discount of the displacement range down. So we have this low resistance liquidity run up in here and a new week opening gap or the new week opening gap for this week. So it's likely to draw up there. Also likely to draw up into premium of the displacement range and this low resistance liquidity run. So down here we're looking for bullish signatures that price wants to go higher so prior to 9 30 we had this raid broke market structure higher and then 9 30 gave a lower time frame raid of a m1 low with smt and we had this displacement up here and as soon as we broke that market structure on this candle I set a limit for this M1 breaker here, but we never got down there. We just had an institutional order flow entry drill in this fair value gap. And I was anticipating price to trade up here for a partial to these equal highs, and then final take profit at the mean threshold of the dealing range inside this low resistance liquidity run. And it delivered nicely up into there, but didn't give me an entry. Um, so this was my initial um, trade idea. So when I saw price retracing down here, I wanted to see if we were going to continue bullish. Um, so I wanted to see if bearish PDRAs were being respected and bullish PDRAs were being violated. Um, because this could have just broke down lower, even though it was unlikely, because the draw on liquidity was that new week opening gap. Um, so because I wanted to watch for that, I didn't blindly buy this M1 breaker after we had this rounded retest here. Um, I just waited to see what was happening and we ended up, we violated these two bullish PD arrays, but we respected the M1 breaker, then violated this bearish PD array here, the fair valley gap, returned to this order block and had displacement away from it. So once I saw this candle here, I was anticipating a fair valley gap to form and I said any or the next fair valley gap that forms I'll take an entry to the high here and that's exactly what ended up happening institutional order flow entry drill here delivering to the buy side liquidity up in here um, and this was within the 9:30 to 10 10 window entry at 10:09 a.m. so um, this was a very very nice trade here and price 
although sloppy in the later uh, AM session, ended up delivering up into the new week opening gap. So after that, I was just waiting to see what was gonna happen. Nothing clear for me in here. And I was really just waiting for the last hour of trading. Um, and in the last hour, we ended up having displacement lower. I was really just waiting for some type of a raid to see what liquidity has yet to be taken. And that ended up coming here where we raided the AM low with SMT and had this displacement up here. So the liquidity at this point that has yet to be taken is buy side. So the low hanging fruit was this M1 fair valley gap in the premium of this displacement range. So entry here in discount at the fair valley gap and breaker and targeting that, um, the um, M1 fair valley gap and that ended up delivering quite late in the uh, last hour of trading here at 3.53ish. Um, and we got pretty animated and actually took the buy side that was up here. So this could have been a partial and this could have been a partial, but when I was watching this, just because it was so late uh, in the day and you know, just entering here and sitting through this consolidation, you're probably gonna have some type of anxiety and because you want to close the trade at four, because that's when the markets close. I, I just, uh, in this paper trade, I just took everything off here at the M1 for Valley Gap. Um, but yeah, it ended up delivering higher for another partial opportunity. So Thursday definitely had the cleanest price action out of the entire week. So even though it was Consolidation profile, but also consolidation profile and just very sloppy price action. The main thing that I noted in my journal for this week is just, you just have to wait for price to print something clean for you, right? This, just watching this live, I just nailed this spot on, right? We're on Tuesday. I couldn't see anything, right? There's nothing here I could identify. Monday, I felt like I kind of forced a trade in here, right? nothing really clean I could identify here. So the best thing is just to wait until you see something clear. And for me, that was on Thursday's trading, right? An opportunity in the AM session and then another opportunity in the PM session. And that would really, that could just be your week. So um, <clears throat> that was one of my main takeaways that I noted in my journal for this week. Then in Friday's trading, <clears throat> Initially, I was anticipating higher prices because the new week opening gap was up here and we left these equal highs. This was previous day's high, Thursday's high, and we had these equal highs here. So I thought price on Friday would want to drop into that. But 930s, um, opening, uh, opening range, we had this displacement down here at 950. And we violated this M15 order block. So that was kind of the tip off that uh, price wanted to go lower. Now, initially when I was watching this, I didn't want to take a trade or an entry right here because we already traded down into this low resistance liquidity run. So I didn't know if price wanted a reverse at this point. So I just wanted to wait for more information and then I mapped out this trade once we got these relative equal lows here at this sell side. We broke below this low, had another market structure shift. I annotated this paper trade to go down to the uh, equal lows that were formed here. That ended up delivering nicely. And then we had an SMT with previous day's low displacement to the upside. I marked out this fair value gap anticipating that price was going to retrace up into the low resistance liquidity run. So these M5 fair value gaps, this annotates premium and discount. So at least up into here. And we did end up delivering that, but um, 
we did not get a return to this fair valley gap for an entry and by here we were re already in premium so the low hanging fruit trade was already done and I didn't want to take on any more risk um, but yeah then this ended up being another seek and destroy day so you have to be very careful with these that's why I only wanted to get in if possible for this uh, low hanging fruit um, take profit because at this point I don't know if this for valley gap is going to hold and we're going to trade higher because this could easily have just um, ended up going lower which happened here but we ended up taking some more buy side first before going lower so that's why I was just limiting all of my take profits to the low hanging fruit um, take profits and not anticipating you know big runs and then I was watching in the last hour of trading for a potential short. Um, this was not as clear as um, Thursday's last hour of trading. Uh, we did have the high, um, the high of the day swept with SMT, but that was earlier in the PM session. We ended up breaking down and. At 3 p.m., we got the RTO into this Fair Valley Gap, ended up trading lower. Um, I'm usually waiting for a raid between 3 and 4. Um, and then I saw this as a raid, so I ended up mapping out this trade here with these equal lows as the draw on liquidity. We did not get that, um, but this is why it's always important to take partials and we had a partial opportunity below this uh, swing low here and then price would have reversed and taken you out and again this is because these are very hard uh, high resistance liquidity run conditions to be trading in so especially in times like these that's why it's always important to take partials and that's another thing that I noted in my uh, journal for this week so it's really just in and out kind of surgical strikes that ICT talks about um, that you know you want to be doing this week so in terms of next week that's really the same same thing um, actually one thing I wanted to note was just on the M15 time frame it shows it the cleanest here how we're gravitating towards that new week opening gap constantly throughout this week right we have that SMT, and I was anticip and we had this break in market structure, and here is where I was anticipating that M5 breaker, but we never got the RTO. Came back up to the new week opening gap. Nothing clear on Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday, same thing. We got that SMT, and then there was that M5 breaker and uh, Fair Valley gap that I noted. We got the RTO there, but that occurred before 9:30 when it went up and traded into the new week opening gap. Same thing happened here, SMT. Uh, this was Thursday, the day that I, I mapped it out pretty nicely. Even though high resistance conditions here, we ended up trading up into the new week opening gap. So <clears throat> I just wanted to note that the, how we have these SMTs below with displacement up and we have this bullish price action forming below the new week opening gap and we're anticipating the new week opening gap being the drawn liquidity because the week is likely to be consolidation um, but yeah going into next week really it's the same thing um, even though I as I said in the beginning I'm anticipating these highs to be taken and <clears throat> this volume and balance to be traded into there's nothing clear here to identify in this price action um, we have a set of equal highs here. We have a set of equal lows here. Um, also, this low is pretty significant. Um, but I have no fucking idea what this is going to do. So I'm just going to have to wait for this week's opening gap and Monday's trading to see which liquidity gets taken first. right? But I'm anticipating these highs to eventually... Uh, be taken so 
that's what I am thinking for SMP. Just an update on silver. Silver ended up playing out very, very nicely. Um, I got an entry, <clears throat> my initial entry here at this weekly for Valley Gap, and then the second entry at the opening or at the high rather of the uh, monthly order block here. <coughs> so price delivered very, very nicely in accordance with the seasonal tendency. And we stopped directly at <clears throat> the consequent encroachment of this weekly, uh, excuse me, monthly swing high candle here. Uh, so that's the rejection block up in here. And it was actually to the to the point. The the mean threshold is 23.89, and the high on this candle comes in at 23.89. So <clears throat> now, um, based on the seasonal tendency, within the middle of April to the beginning of July, end of June, beginning of July, we're gonna anticipate a bearish retracement based on the seasonal tendency. Um, now, this is where I noted to take a partial off. Um, personally, I did not take a partial off. Uh, that's just because this trade for me is more of a long-term kind of investment type of a trade. This is not trading like I do on S&P. Um, and I'm bullish commodities for the next decade. So that's why I'm not in here trying to take a partial up in here because I anticipate that price is going to go much, much higher. But I'm still outlining this um, based on ICT principles. So this is where I uh, annotated in, in my journal where it would have been a theoretical partial. But now I'm anticipating a retracement. Um, the only thing that I see we could retrace down into is this Fair Valley gap up in here or this um, gap here. So I'm going to see what price does over, over um, these next two months for silver. Uh, but yeah, those are my thoughts, and we'll see how this, um, this week plays out in S&P.